surprisingly, we're beginning with a fashion statement again, Coach. Yes, we are. So these glasses are not only super swaggy, oh, but they're recording you right now close up. So yeah, this is very cool. So we're seeing everything that I'm seeing. So the pressure's on. Okay. I guess we're already on camera. I don't know, we're double camera now. Does that make sense? Avery's making me do this. This is Avery's idea. With vision on the mind, what did you see the last few minutes of the game that allowed you to close out a really, really important win? Well, uh, we're trying to win with stops. Like, we talk about that every day, win with stops. We're drilling in practice, win with stops. And, and um, like, Kansas State's a great team. They just beat Kansas. I mean, what more do you say? And so you know that they're going to make a run. And, and uh, you know, we, we helped them a little bit. We... Um, you know, we decided that we were going to take a, a sabbatical from making free throws, which happens sometimes. And, um, and so I thought, uh, I thought we had a yeoman's effort in the most critical moments on the defensive end. I thought we had some spectacular efforts, uh, mostly on Perry, who's been the guy that gets them going in the second half. And I think our guys were really devoted to that. He's a terrific, terrific talent in, in the middle of a great season. And then we had a couple guys make big shots. Uh, Jack's none bigger than Jack's shot. Uh, Spence kind of keeping his dribble alive and just milking the clock and actually getting to the rim. And, and uh, guys just got it out. I'm really proud of him. Let's talk about that Jackson three-pointer. What was the specific set you called there, and what were you looking for? Just, we're just running a sideline out of bounds, wide triple. We do it all the time, and it's it, the guys get to be very, very creative. And, and the ball's in Dallin's hands. You kind of have all these now that to go work kind of a flow game or even a triple flow game after. Uh, Dallin rejected a couple times. Uh, Noah made a great early, early cut to kind of take people out, and then Jax just came up and said, I'm going to shoot this, and that's what great players do. They make big-time shots. And then Spence, obviously, after running the shot clock way down, gets that layup. What was the idea there? Well, I think Spence was just it was really smart and savvy. So, you know, he's, at that point, you're saying, hey, can we, can, we, can we end this clock? And he did it by keeping the ball incredibly safe. And then after milking the clock, best thing, last five, ten seconds, is like, let's see if we can get a bucket, and he did. And, again, we talk about this all the time, but, guys, I can't, I can't overemphasize how amazing it is that Spencer Johnson, what he was two and three years ago, to making that play again tonight, um, to keeping a steady against the press late, it just is, watching these, these young guys grow is just, it's breathtaking. When the three-point shots are not falling, and certainly you've had so many nights where the team has shot the ball so well, that was not the case tonight. What do you do to, to try and find other ways? And, and yeah. frankly, what happened tonight? For, well, first, I, I thought we did a great job attacking the rim. We just, we just didn't finish at the free throw line. Uh, I, I love the shots we got, the three-point shots we got. We just didn't get enough. Like, we, we, you know, right now it's two games in a row where we've been under 30, and that's a real concern for us. Um, so I'm, I'm actually more concerned about um, the low number of attempts we're getting up more than I am about making or missing because we make shots. Ali Khalifa inserted back into the lineup tonight. How would you assess his performance off of a limited practice? He helps us so much. Uh, you know, he had one practice uh, after being in bed for eight days. And so um, he helps us so much just with our ball movement and giving us another option. Um, him and Foose, are, they're so complimentary in terms of letting us play a completely different style of basketball when they're on the floor. It was great to see Ali make a couple shots. That really helped us. Um, and he, he, he really punishes people that can't guard five out and uh, had a couple of beautiful late passes again tonight. He was terrific. I know that you're super stoked to be home and to not be on the road again. What's the biggest difference in making a short turnaround because you get UCF on Tuesday, but being in Pro Bowl instead of being in Morgantown and Norman? Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's you know, the, it's great we don't have to jump on a plane. It's great we don't have to be in a hotel, but most importantly, we got to be here with our, with our family, like these 18,000 family members, right? And, um, this gym is special, and, and the gym was electric tonight, and everybody here was great, and we probably don't win the game without them, and so this is really a team effort. So um, we're, we're grateful for everybody that comes to these games, and we can't wait to see everybody on Tuesday for what's going to be an epic knockdown, drag-out war against a great UCF team. Oh, I, again, uh, I, I know that you are super appreciative of the fans here, but ultimately, like, your guys still have to go and make plays. So... What is the difference between, let's say, last year or even two years ago and this year for the guys that are making those plays when you need to late? Well, I think, I think, um, I think you know, it's just experience. We, uh, you're going to get bored of me saying this, but there's no way to get experience other than experiencing, right? And, and, and our guys um, have a, a better 
a sense of where to turn to um, when it gets difficult. And they also, more importantly, have a better sense of what's important, about how important simply winning a catch is. Uh, you know, Jax had an unbelievable play with maybe four minutes left where uh, it was a tough pass. He, he caught it once and barely won a 50-50 against the defender and spun around and had to win it again against another 50-50 defender. Um, and examples of plays like that, you learn by going through it that, like, this is crucial. You don't dream uh, as a 10-year-old, 12-year-old, 14-year-old aspiring basketball player. You're not thinking about, like, man, if I could just win a catch, we're going to win the game. But experience teaches you that that is actually among the most important things in the game. A defensive rebound is among the most important things in the game. And, and you learn that through experience. And our guys have done a nice job doing that, and they're still learning. Two quick hitters to finish up, uh, the first being Trey Stewart inserted into the lineup. What did you think of what he brought to the floor tonight? Yeah, I've been super proud of Trey. Um, you know, Trey hasn't been on the court for the last three weeks, and um, he's increasingly brought more and more and more positive energy and enthusiasm and great play to our team in practice and been great in the locker room. And, and um, so I had a lot of confidence going to him tonight. Uh, he didn't have any forewarning, and he came on immediately and just played with uh, terrific energy in a night that it was really important for him to do that. I thought it was spectacular. And then, again, you're going to point to Les and Zeeler. I'm telling you, like, again, watching these young men grow is pretty great. Like, it's just, is, it's just the best part of this, and, and uh, Trey was another great example of that tonight. If you're teaching a class to your basketball team on Monday morning, what's the headline on the whiteboard? Um, by Monday, it's only going to be Central Florida. So, <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll get to that pretty quick. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah probably on Sunday, I should have asked. Coach, thanks for the time. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you.